own any piece outside any piece of land outside the earth. It, it's it's very comparable to uh, no nation is allowed to uh, deal in arms with some countries in the world. And that also means that all the inhabitants of those nations are not allowed to do that. It's the same, uh, the same principle. So it doesn't say specifically that persons can't do it, and that's why he thinks that he can do it, but it's not, it has no legal uh, foundation. Uh, hi, uh, I'm the only applicant from my country. So yay! <laughs> uh, Which country, by the way? El Salvador. El Salvador. All right. Yay. I know I'm gonna go to Mars, so uh, how much are we gonna get paid? And if I get paid, I'm gonna donate that for Mars One. <laughs> so we, uh, we're currently in round one of the selection. We'll, we'll narrow down in, in the next, uh, in round three, two, three, and four to uh, about six teams of four people that will go full-time into training uh, with Mars One. And as soon as people go full-time into training, then obviously, they will be paid a salary. Uh, the, the height of the salary will depend on the country where we do it, but it will be a competitive uh, salary for a, uh, for a well-educated uh, position. So I, I can't really say exactly the number, but it would be a, a, sal a salary that's a, norm that's a normal salary that some of your friends uh, would also be making. I, I do have to add that we, we have, of course, uh, Applicants that have uh, private profiles, so I'm not, I'm not entirely sure if you are the only one from El Salvador, but at this moment you are the only one public, great. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but we right now do have a hard stop at 3 o'clock, so Aaron went to see if, he, if anybody's like trying to find us out or whatever, but we'll keep asking questions so they, they charge in the door or something, but we are supposed to stop at 3 o'clock. Hi, so I'm 14 and not old enough to apply, though I did try. Um, are there any, like, anything I can do to prepare um, to maybe... Is there anything I can do to prepare to maybe be accepted later? Like any classes or stuff you're looking for? You should do what you want to do, because that's what you will be best at, and we will need people who are, who are generally good. So don't, don't do, if you're not interested in math, don't do math because you would think it would increase your chances because it would actually decrease your chances. Mm -hmm. So do what you want to do and make sure that you're really good at it. And that's the best way to achieve anything in life uh, and also to become a successful Mars One applicant. And, uh, in four years, you'll uh, you'll be able to apply. We'll have a new round every year, so we'll be waiting for you. All right, awesome, thank you. Well, can I uh, stay curious? Curiosity is something that's relatively rare in the world today, and it's obvious that you're already curious, so don't lose that. I'm an aircraft mechanic, and so redundant systems tend to be in the back of my mind a lot. Um, when we have solar, we've been talking about that and the fact that nuclear may not really be feasible as far as, as being able to get it sent into space. Um, you mentioned that you worked uh, with windmills. Would that be able to provide enough power per, uh, for the cost of the payload to do something like that up there? Uh, though Mars has only 1% atmosphere, so it's, it's, uh, that's one of the reasons why it's extremely difficult to do uh, anything with wind energy. But it's also, uh, so, so the, uh, that means that if, it's, uh, if it, there's 100 uh, kilometers per hour wind on Mars, it would feel like a 10 kilometer per hour breeze on Earth, because it's only 1% it's only, uh, of the uh, atmosphere. So it, it's 10% because it's, uh, it squares with the velocity. So and also, there's, it, there can be storms on Mars, but they're quite rare. So the amount of times that you would be using the, the mass of your windmill usefully would be very low. So we've, we've looked at that trade-off, and the, uh, anything you do to, to increase the amount of power that you have is always better 
to not do it and instead use that mass and put additional solar panels. Right. So uh, make sure that we have enough redundancy in the solar panels. So if your cable gets cut or uh, whatever happens, uh, that's that's the best way to create safety from the from the energy point of view. We we got a grace period of about eleven more minutes. So if there are one, two, three, four questions. Be okay with answering four more questions? Yeah, sure. And I'll be I'll be uh, I'll be answering some press questions after this. Uh, but after that, I'll be going with you guys to the museum. So you can also uh, uh, ask me more questions there. Hello. Uh, Mars One is an, int, uh, an international affair. What is your Mars One opinion on planting a flag? I'm all for a flag, as long as it's a flag that doesn't represent uh, one or only <laughs> few. <laughs> I'm all for a flag. Considering the risks, the costs, the training, and everything involved, what do you personally believe is the percent chance that humans will be surviving on Mars by 2023? I can't give a percentage on that. I'm, a, I'm, an, I'm an, an, an entrepreneur, and as an entrepreneur, you always have to be far too optimistic, because otherwise you would never start your company. You have a, Technology companies have a 10% chance of surviving the first year. So you'd be really stupid to start your own technology company, but you do it because you really believe that you can do it. So uh, I, I really can't do that. I, I can say it's, it will be very complex, but we know technically it can be done. We know that financing can be done. And we know that we can find and train a team of people that can do the job. So. If I would if I would think about those percentages and, and write them down, I would probably quit. So and you, you have to believe in what you do. And if we don't make it in 2023, we'll make it in 2025. And that's how you have to have to have to look at it. If I if I would see any one point where I would think that's not possible, I would stop right away. I just told you how how easily I, I leave things behind and start something new. If I would find something like that after, of course, I've tried to solve it in any way that I can, if I really think there's no solution, I could never work on it for one more day because I wouldn't be motivated. Hi, I'm uh, Daniel Wharton. Uh, I have one question about technology. With the boom in technology, when we get there, we'll, and technology is going to continue to advance on Earth, how are we going to take that into account on Mars, and will we be able to continue at least be able to keep up with the with the boom. Well, there's a number of technologies that are evolving rapidly, like phones. But the rocket that uh, that we use today is basically the same rocket exactly as the one that put the Sputnik into orbit. So there's really almost no technology development in that field. And uh, there, of course, there will be things like. Medical, medical equipment that we'll take to Mars will be far more advanced than because there's a lot of uh, developments helping, uh, happening there. And of course we will take those things, but for, for the, the big components of the mission, you need to fix the design at some point and use that, even if while you're building your rover, for instance, a better camera becomes available. Uh, the, uh, if you look at the, the camera and, co and computer systems of the Curiosity rover, uh, if you look at the specs, they're terrible because they had to select them a long time ago to be able to really build, design that system around those technologies. And then if you suddenly replace the technology, you would have to start over with your design. So some of it will be, uh, some of the integrated parts will be relatively old fashioned. And some of the things like medical things that you can just, you can just take another stethoscope, uh, those will be very high tech. Ah. Uh, I know you're planning only one week trip to Mars and only to establish a new colony, but and also to find if there was like a life. What about if like you really find like real life, like oh, ancient life, like it's dinosaurs, something that wiped out the whole life in the past? What would you do in the next step for that? 
if, if life is discovered on Mars between now and, and departure. Yeah, but like like intelligent life, like something like happen, here's about disappear, or something really happen. What would you next step? Were you trying to bring back the crew? Or create something else to bring back those Oh, you mean when they're there? Yeah. Uh, I think well, I think that the chance that there's intelligent life on Mars is really, really, really slim. Or they have to be so intelligent that they've been dodging us all the time. <laughs> uh, but I think that's that's not really something that can that can be the case. What could be the case is that there is life on Mars, and it, in theory, I don't really believe that's that's the case. That it would be dangerous to the crew on Mars. Um, that's that's really one of the risks that the crew will be taking, but because there is just no return ship, it's not as if we choose not to bring them back. We simply can't bring them back. So they would be, uh, they would have uh, an additional problem to solve. And uh, from from Earth, we would help them, and they would they could send measurements, and we could solve we could send the solutions to them. But uh, they would have to solve it uh, right there. Um, one more question. Rounds one, two, and four are pretty well understood um, for the selection process. You know, round one is happening right now. Round two is obviously the interview and the medical statement of good health. And round four is the, the long training period along with the voting at the end of it. When does round three happen and what does it consist of, um, sort of specifically? Actually, uh, round four is an international round where we'll, we'll bring together international teams and they, and they will do relatively small, short challenges and maybe in the end of it they might be in a in, in a enclosed environment for up to a week but it would still be relatively short okay. the, the, after that there would be the training in which they really stay for longer periods of time um, so round three would be narrowing it down with uh, challenges also group challenges but probably national just because it's easier and uh, it, it's also a logistics uh, issue so it's easier to keep it national at first um, and how exactly, so, so there will be challenges, uh, there will be additional requirements for you, uh, more medical uh, exams as compared to the ones that you, you would basically have your own physician perform in uh, before round number uh, uh, two. Um, the exact details of that uh, is really something that you would have to uh, discuss with Norbert, but he did tell me to tell you to expect the unexpected. A lot of will. <laughs> It, going, going to Mars is really something that that you, you the challenges will be in the things that you didn't didn't see coming, so that will also be part of the training. And then the time frame, when is that going to be happening? Uh, I, I expect that round two will take uh, place mostly this year. Uh, probably round three will be uh, spread all over 2014 in uh, in different countries, and 2015 will be uh, round number four. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's give a round of applause to Bob uh, for agreeing to be with us again and for being very gracious with, uh, with his uh, time and with his uh, frank discussion of what's going on there. Yes, Dave. Of those people who are going to be involved in the group videotape, we're going to meet immediately after the conclusion of the first floor lobby. Thank you very much. So, uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, you all and the organizers for allowing me to uh, moderate your session today. Uh, I'm a space geek, so this stuff was, uh, it was definitely the most fun thing I did all week. Uh, so, I w besides thanking the organizers for inviting me, I want to thank them for putting this together. We want to thank all of our speakers, Boz, uh, Bob, and the panelists. Let's give them a round of applause. take this time to thank an anonymous donor whose uh, very generous monetary uh, donation made all of this possible. We provided a lot of the funds so that we could uh, be here in a very nice facility on uh, George Washington's campus. I think we ought to uh, uh, get Apple and Johnny Rockets to kick in since we were prominently displaying their logos throughout the uh, live stream. Um, and I want to encourage you all to uh, continue to support this community, whether you're an applicant or whether you're uh, just like me, someone supporting. Uh, it's important that we all, as a community, support the effort. And I, as a 
Uh, proud former naval officer, I want to leave you with the words of John Paul Jones, uh, he who will not risk cannot win. So thank you very much for, uh, uh, for joining us today. Uh, I have enjoyed it and I hope you have too. Uh, Austin will give you some final uh, instructions on what we need to do to make sure we police up the space and we take care of everything else. Hopefully you'll enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you. Nothing special, just to pick up your trash, of course, and meet you down in the lobby if you're doing the video. And, and then there's also the after party at the Air and Space Museum. Flags. And there are flags for sale. Um, the flag that Boss had. Um, boss had. Um, they are $25. They're super nice flags. And they were designed by Joseph Sweeney and voted on by the AMG as the, the best flag design. And that's what we want to plant on Mars. Um, and see Aaron if you would like to purchase one. All of the revenue from the flags go to supporting um, what we paid out of pocket today. So thank you again for coming, and uh, we'll see you. Which means you can pay more than twenty-five if you want. Yeah. Uh, or you could just beat them up and take them. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I endorse violence. Um, so thank you, and we'll see you guys down in the lobby. <laughs>